Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Back with me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Kyle Drop. He's a co-founder and chief research officer over at Morning Consult. And we're going to take a look at the fastest growing brands of 2019 and food and beverage companies that are coming out on top with the younger folks. Kyle, it's great to have you back with me as always. Always my favorite interviews to do. You guys come up with the best topics at Morning Consult. Tell us about the growing brands report. Well, we're delighted to be here. And as you know, we're doing about 10,000 interviews every day in the United States. And this report catalogs the growing brands in terms of the percent purchase consideration growth over the past year. As you mentioned at the top, food and beverage companies dominate the list with uh, DoorDash and Postmates at the top. And there's so many other interesting tidbits that uh, I'm excited to chat about. All right, let's take a look at our first chart here. This is the top five fastest growing brands of 2019. There's a lot here. So you can think about there's financial services companies and financial technology plays that are going. So Venmo, Cash App makes it into the top 10. DoorDash is number one. It's going to be a theme that comes up in the next few minutes. DoorDash, Postmates, we have a lot of new Beyond Beer type uh, brands that, that get to the top. And plenty of unicorns also make it in the top 20. Yeah, it's amazing to see White Claw. It, it just came out of nowhere in, in 2019, and it, it, it dominates um, a, a lot of the charts that we're looking at here. And it's no surprise to see DoorDash because for my Thanksgiving, one of the kids decided they didn't want to eat anything I made, and he got DoorDash on Thanksgiving. I'm like, okay, it's your money, your app. Certainly Go convenient. I, so, all right, let's take a look at our next chart here. Speaking of the fastest growing brands by generation, now Gen Z, of course, this is where DoorDash comes into play. There's three things that stand out to me here. So DoorDash across the top, all four generations, it's number one up there. I think the second thing I'd point out is on the left here, you see among younger generations, some of the, the legacy older brands yeah. are growing pretty fast. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then sort of the reverse is true on the right-hand side among boomers. Uh, you can see Impossible uh, Foods, Ring, uh, even Postmates again and, and Venmo are picking up uh, market share in terms of purchase consideration. Isn't Gen Z too young to, to have White Claw hard seltzer on there? But I, not Jill, I love it that that's up there. There's a bunch of reasons why, why they're growing and it's one that, that stood out to us. As you know, they have a nine figure social media following, 100 million plus uh, Instagram followers. And then now that they're owned by the Walt Disney Company and they're a big part of the Disney Plus rollout, we see one reason why they're growing too. Jif has been one we've we've gotten a lot of comments too I was on, on say, Jif I mean, and, and Hagen Dazs and 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 those sorts of brands. Yeah, um, even I could see you know 100 grand. That that kind of um, I, that was unexpected as well. These are always so interesting to take a look at. And Kind Bars, I think between the older generations, I can certainly see why. But um, really consistent with some of the brands like White Claw is and DoorDash is in every single category on here. I know, just across the top, you see yeah. a lot of the, the food, food delivery companies. And as I mentioned at the outset, some of the financial technology um, companies, whether it's you know, Venmo or, or Cash App over here. And I mean, it's worth noting that a lot of these companies have plenty of room to grow. So about 40% of adults overall that we talked to said that they would consider purchasing something from DoorDash. That's up from about 12% a year and a half ago. So 12 versus 40 in terms of purchase consideration growth. Still have a lot of room to go. Right, but going back to why legacy brands are doing well, really well, it really goes back to their engagement, their interaction, their, their um, experience that they're providing. That's what's attractive to Gen Z? It's imperative for these legacy or more established brands mm -hmm. to grow. We had this major Gen Z report out about two months ago where 90% of brands have lower awareness among Gen Z than among adults in general. And so, you know, they have a lot of room to grow, they need to think about the social channels that they're using to engage with potential consumers and, and growing consumers as well. Which is challenging because social channels change a lot. What was hot last year wasn't, you know, it's not even representative this year. Yeah, I remember when, when we were here a couple of months ago, we mentioned that, that Gen Z goes social media first for news and engagement, yeah. almost half, whereas boomers are half to television first. So these brands need to think about how they're, they're spending their money. Right, and the report also mentions that gains in awareness might not always be good. Oh yeah, so the, the spotlight that's shined on you can be shined on you for good and for mm -hmm. bad reasons. So in the top 20, uh, we see companies like uh, Juul, uh, WeWork, uh, Purdue Pharma, Huawei. These are all companies that have increased and that have seen double digit increases in awareness over the past year. But most of that is coming uh, from a negative side. Uh, it's worth noting that, that DoorDash is number one uh, in overall awareness gains as well. So, you know, 
that's probably a positive growth story for them. But for others, you know, being in the news is, is not always related to increases in purchase consideration or, in fact, increases in favorability overall. All right, now to wrap up here, obviously for brand, uh, people in, in brand, in marketing, communications, there's a number of les lessons that can be derived from here. Yeah, there's a thousand lessons. I'd focus on three. One, brands really can grow. Uh, in late 2017, only 35% of Americans knew what DoorDash was. Now it's 85%. Mm -hmm. uh, two, these brands need to think about the channels that they're working on and they, they need to talk to Gen Z in a different way than others. Related to that, we had this major influencer report out just a couple weeks ago where we asked teens and Gen Z what they care about when they're thinking about how influencers talk about brands. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing they said was authenticity. And so the more authentic these brands in these left-hand columns can be, the better it can be for their potential growth. Yeah, and I find that really encouraging because you hear so many reports, you know, millennials, Gen Z, they, they don't care and um, their opinion doesn't, shouldn't count as much. I think their opinion counts 100%. They're, you know, they're gonna be the largest population of purchasers in the country and globally. So it, it's encouraging to see people that are involved in the branding and marketing space are really taking um, their thoughts seriously. I couldn't have said it better than you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a huge part of the future consumer universe. All right. Great to see you as always, Kyle. Thanks so much for joining us at Market Happy Holidays. Site. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.